Today I'm going to review two Jackery solar generators, the Jackery Explorer 1000 and the Jackery 500. Now there are many excellent reviews of both of these that you can find online. So what makes this review different? Well I'm going to explain to you how these perform as power solutions for astronomy equipment out in the field. And I'll tell you exactly how long you can expect them to last depending on the kind of astronomy equipment you're running. But before we get to that, let's talk about the general build quality and features of these solar generators. The first thing you notice is that these are very compact, well-designed um, generators. Everything, all the features you need to access are conveniently located on the front panel. They come in a very solid, rigid ABS plastic case with a nice included uh, carrying handle. These are also very lightweight. This weighs 13.3 pounds and the 1000 watt generator weighs 22 pounds. Now compare this 22 pounds to a 63 pound lead acid battery. The lead acid battery will give you a 100 amp hour lead acid battery at 63 pounds will give you about 50 amp hours of use. This thing will give you 70 amp hours and it weighs a third the weight of the lead acid battery. So that makes it very convenient to carry back and forth out into the field. Now, solar generators are different than a standalone lead acid battery because they have all of the features that you might want while you're out in the field. Of course, they have DC power, they have AC power, and they have a variety of USB ports as well. In particular, the Jackeries, like all solar generators I've seen, have a 10 amp um, DC power port which you can power your equipment from. The 500 model also has two 7 amp uh, power ports. These are using 6.4 by 1.4 millimeter sockets which is not exactly convenient for us where astronomy equipment uses the typical 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter sockets or connectors. But that problem can be solved easily with a simple adapter and I'll put a link to that adapter below this video. Now the DC power ports are voltage regulated. This, these are regulated at 10 amps, these two at 7 amps. And when I say they're voltage regulated, what I found is I measured the voltage supplied by these things from 100% capacity all the way down till the battery management system shut this off at less than 1% of capacity remaining. Using about 63 watt load, I was getting a voltage of 12.85 from 100% down to shut off. So you'll get no voltage sag and you won't have to worry about any kind of response from your equipment for the voltage being too low as you run the power down to um, zero. And that's very useful. The other thing to note is they come with a built-in pure side wave inverter. This one is capable of 500 watts. This one is capable of 1000 watts. This obviously has one port. This has three. I've used these to power my laptop in the field. I've also used them to power the AC power supply that comes with mount and they work quite well. have not had any problem with that whatsoever. In addition, you'll see a variety of USB ports, depending on the model. Uh, the type typically USB-A, but you'll find some USB-C uh, versions as well. And these I use to recharge my cell phone while out in the field. You can use them to recharge your uh, tablet or iPad, um, and that's very convenient as well. The other thing to note is they have an LCD display. The display shows you how much power you're using. The display will show you how much uh, capacity remains, so it'll show you in increments of 1% from 100% down to 0%. In addition, what also makes this a solar generator is the fact that it has a built-in charge controller. And for solar charging, this has an MPPT solar charge controller. And you disconnect the 8 millimeter output from a solar panel, Jackery uses 8 millimeter. In, into this input port. If you have somebody else's solar panel, you'll have to get an adapter depending on uh, what type of uh, uh, plug the end of the solar panel 
um, output has. Now, how long does it take to recharge these? You can recharge them with the included AC power supply. This one I recharged in six and a half hours from zero to 100%. This one in seven hours. I also used 100 watt solar panel, again from Jackery, to recharge both of these from zero to 100%. It took 10 and a half hours to recharge this one, and it took nine and a half hours to recharge this one. So it might be surprising that it takes almost the same time to recharge this battery at about twice the capacity of this, but that's because this has a, uh, charge, a, a charging uh, circuitry in here which can accept much higher current. And so they do supply a heavier power supply, AC power supply for this one than they do this one. And with, as far as the solar generator, this can use more of the juice coming out of the solar panel than this one can. So that's why you see similar recharge periods or times. Now, I also did total capacity tests on both of these. This one is rated at 102 watt hours. This one is 518 watt hours. So I discharged both from 100% down to 0% capacity remaining multiple times and measured how much, um, what, what the number of watt hours registered was. And in each case, I found the results very repeatable. So for this one, I got 908 watt hours. So that's only 91% of the rated 1,002 1, watt hours, but it is typical of what I've seen for other measurements on the Jackery 1000. On the other hand, on the 500, it's rated at 518 watt hours. I repeatedly measured 550 watt hours. So this is actually giving 107% of the rated capacity. Now I don't claim that you'll get the same exact results with your uh, 500 or 1000 watt hour model, but that's just to give you an idea of what the actual measurements were on these particular units that I got. Now the other thing to note is the build quality inside. Now you can't see that here, so I encourage you to look at a couple of teardown videos on these solar generators from Jackery. I'll put links to those at the end of the, below the video. When you see those, you'll see the high quality of components inside. Nice conformal coated circuit boards. Um, the battery management system looks well designed. Everything is well positioned in there. Uh, it doesn't look like it's jury rigged. They use very um, heavy gauge wires where appropriate and they have their temperature sensors in there to protect this thing against uh, operating in unsafe temperature regions. The other thing I noticed is all of the sockets that you will access on the front panel, as well as the uh, buttons in the LCD display, are very solidly attached to this front panel, and I don't think they're gonna come loose over time as you use this over the years. Now, they're both rated to last for 10 years with typical usage. They use lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide uh, cells inside, also called NMC. Those are rated at 500 full discharge cycles. That means you can run these things from 100% down to zero capacity 500 times. That, and when you have done that, you don't throw these away you'll just lose the top 20% of the capacity. So you should have about 80% of the starting capacity left after you've done 500 full cycles. The other thing to note is that you really can run these lithium batteries and solar generators down to 0% capacity. There's a lot of misinformation saying that you've got to leave 10 or 20% capacity, otherwise you will damage the cells inside. That's simply not true with lithium solar generators as well as lithium batteries. The battery management system, which is inside, is the brains of the system to protect this from misuse. That includes over voltage protection, short circuit protection, trying to recharge below freezing or trying to um, recharge at too high of a temperature. And the other thing the battery management system does is it checks the voltages on the individual cells and makes sure that those are balanced. And when they reached the minimum specification, 
the battery management system will turn these off. You don't have a battery management system in a lead acid battery, so we have to manually stop using the energy in the battery when we get to about 50% because we will cause damage to the cells inside. But that won't happen here if you allow the battery management system to step in and do its job. So I'm very happy with the way these uh, are designed. It makes them very easy to transport in the field and it also makes them very easy to set up. To see how these performed under actual use conditions, I took both solar generators with me out into the field for multiple nights of astro imaging. And I used them for two different setups. The first setup is a Mighty Mount from Software Bisque and ASI uh, 1600 non-cooled imaging camera, Celestron motorized focuser, and a pair of cooling fans for the Celestron C11. Those were powered with the Jackery 1000 uh, 10 amp DC output port using a 12 volt to 48 volt voltage converter because the software BISC mounts require 48 volts to operate, not 12 volts. Now all of that is being controlled with the Sky X, which runs on my Dell 15.4 inch laptop. And that was powered using the AC power supply from Dell connected to the output of the AC inverter on this Jackery. Total power consumption for that setup is 80 watts. And I ran, typically I would run for about eight hours a night, and that would only use 72% of the capacity of this solar generator, which means I could run for over 11 hours if I wanted to before I consumed all of the energy out of this and have to shut down and then recharge the next day. With the Jackery 500, I ran a second software BISC mount, a mighty mount as well. That one was powered using the AC inverter on the Jackery and the AC power supply that comes with a mighty mount from software BISC. The mighty mount itself then powered the ASI 240 imaging camera, an ASI guider, and a Celestron motorized focuser. Now in addition to that, I had a um, dew heater on the C11, Celestron C11 SCT, running at 100% power, and I also ran the cooler on the ASI 240 at minus 10 degrees C, and those were both powered out of the DC port. Total power consumption with that setup is 66 watts. And that could run the, this could run the entire setup at 66 watts for eight and a half hours. Now, your setup may not be the same as either of those and probably isn't. So I put together a little table uh, with three different ranges of power consumption with three different kinds of setup. And from that, you can estimate how long each of these would last for you. So in the first case, perhaps you're not using a laptop like I was, but are using an ASI Air with a Raspberry Pi inside or something similar like a mini PC to run the um, software and control everything. Along with that, you're using an imaging camera that is not cooled and a guider and maybe a motorized focuser and a motorized filter wheel. In that case, you would be using something between 20 and 30 watts. In that case, the uh, Jackery 1000 would give you 30 hours of power. So you could image for two, three nights in a row without having to recharge. With the Jackery 500, you could expect to last 18 hours. So you could probably go for a couple of nights without having to recharge. But what if you added a dew heater or added cooling to your camera or both? In that case, you'd be adding uh, an additional 10, 20, 30 amps, um, watts of power, and you would be running somewhere around 60 watts total. In that case, with the Jackery 1000, you could expect to run for about 15 hours. In the case of the Jackery 500, you could expect to run for only nine hours. So a full night of imaging, but you'd need to recharge with the 500 after. The other case would be you had all of that, but instead of the a Raspberry Pi or mini PC, you were using 
a laptop like I was in the example I gave above. In that case, you could be using anywhere between 60 and 120 watts, depending on whether you have the coolers on full or the dew heater on full or both. In that case, this would last, the, the Jackery 1000 would last seven and a half hours, and the Jackery 500 would last less than five hours. So that gives you an idea. You can look at that table and decide what range your equipment falls in, and you can figure out what capacity solar generator is right for you. Now, overall, these performed extremely well in the field, didn't give me any issues, supplied the power as I needed, had no, no hiccups. They're very easy to use, very easy to transport and set up. I really like that. It's all-in-one feature is really nice. The only problem with the all-in-one feature is you're, you're paying for a lot more than just a simple battery. So the choice is yours. If you like the all-in-one feature, these might be the right choice for you. The one thing I don't like about the Jackeries is their expense. The 1000 model runs for $999 and the 500 model for $499. I would never pay the full price for these because there are often sales on Jackery's website or Amazon, both cases. You will find these things discounted multiple times throughout the year. Now the best price I've seen for the Jackery 1000 has been 15% uh, off, so $850. And for the 500 model, uh, again, 15% off, so uh, 425. So if you're going to buy one of these, please look for a sale. At least get uh, 25 or 50 dollars off on one of these, or wait for the 15% sale that they have once or twice a year. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. If so, pre please press the like button. If you want to see more of these videos, you can subscribe to this channel. I will put links to all of the things I referenced below the video. And if you want to see more topics on astronomy, astronomy equipment and reviews, you can take a look at my website, californiaskies.com. In the meantime, thank you for watching and hope to see you again.